Hello and welcome to a Lightroom tutorial. Uh, I had a question from a Photo Guild member uh, who asked me about organizing their photos in Lightroom. So they're having a little bit of trouble. They've just had Lightroom for about a week and I'm going to try and help them and hopefully help everyone watching this organize their photos a little bit more effectively in Lightroom. So I'm going to just let you know how I do things and hopefully that can help you and lead you to um, kind of a uh, your own way of doing things in a, an efficient way that works for you. So if you just barely open up Lightroom, it's kind of empty like this, just looks like this. And what we're going to do is go ahead and uh, start from scratch. So if you just open up Lightroom for the first time, what I recommend doing is go ahead and creating a new catalog and saving it in a place where you know where it's at. And I recommend doing that all under one roof with your photographs. And when I say all under one roof, I just mean uh, all in one file. So I've got this um, folder here on my desktop that I've called uh, LR Tutorial Catalog. And <clears throat> you could name this anything. You could name this uh, John's Photos or uh, Mary's Photos or whatever you want to name it. But inside of that uh, folder, wherever you choose to keep it, I would recommend keeping a folder for your photos. So um, a, a place to organize your photos inside of and then also another folder, so we'll create a new folder here and call this folder um, catalogs or Lightroom catalogs, something to that effect. And this is be a place where you can uh, store your Lightroom catalog and we'll go ahead and go into there and um, we'll call this um, Alex catalog one. All right, and we'll just save that. And so what that's doing is closing down Lightroom now and it's opening up the, catalog, the new catalog that I've just created. So once you create a new catalog, it kind of closes down the old catalog and opens up uh, the new catalog that you've created. So now that that catalog is stored where we want it to, um, we can begin by um, importing some photos. So Lightroom kind of prompts you here, click the import, and import button to begin. But before we start organizing uh, or importing and organizing our photos in Lightroom, we kind of have to have a plan for where we're going to keep them on our on our uh, computer um, so that we're aware of that because Lightroom will know where our photos are. But if we're not aware of, of where our photos are, things can get really messy. So here is how I do things. I have um, within, of course, my folder, like I talked about, a, a photos folder. And inside of uh, there, I kind of organize my photos into uh, folders based on the date that they were taken and what I was doing. So here you can see I've got a folder and these are just um, the photos inside of here weren't actually taken on these dates. You can see I just put a few photos in each uh, catalog and kind of created this so simple little uh, setup for, for demonstrations. But um, uh, anyway, you can see that I've kind of organized my folder by year, then month, then date so that it, everything stays chronologically organized. And then kind of what I was shooting. So here a model, here a model. And basically um, what I would do is when I come home and I've got photos on my camera, I take the memory card out, plug it in, and um, uh, that would obviously pop up. So here I've got another folder that's called memory card just to kind of mock that process. So if I put in a new folder or a, new, a memory card with some new photos, it might pop up and I'll select it and then there'll be some photos inside of there. So here are some photos inside of the memory card here. And so what I would do is over inside of uh, my photos folder on my computer, I would create a new folder. I would put today's date or the day, day that I shot the photos in. So put that and then I would say what I was shooting or if the client's name, if it was a client um, or whatever. So and then inside of that folder, I just take the photos from my card and drag and drop them in there. And um, Obviously, if you were doing this from a memory card, they wouldn't actually disappear. They would just copy and paste over to here. Um, so I'm actually going to do that instead just to kind of simulate um, what would happen from a memory card. So that mem they would files would be copied over. And uh, now they're in your folder here. They're also still on your memory card. So you may, uh, at this time uh, during your process, also drag them and drop them maybe into an external hard drive or somewhere else where you're backing up the full files from your camera. Um, so backing up as soon as possible is always a good uh, thing to do. So this would be an appropriate time to do that if you're going to do that. So uh, anyway, now that we have our photos in the folder where we want them, we'll go ahead and go into Lightroom and begin the import process. 
So again, now our Lightroom catalog and our photos are all stored under one roof on our computer, nice and neat, organized. So uh, everything should be right where we know where it is, right where we want it. So we'll start importing photos. Now there are a couple of different ways to uh, import photos with Lightroom. So the first thing you want to do is kind of just look at this, these options up here. And these three are the ones that we're going to be concerned with and really more so the copy or the add. So with copy, you would uh, do this if you're coming straight from your camera's memory card. And in here, you can uh, let Lightroom new, know where you want to uh, save your image to, images to and all of that. But the great thing is, is we already put our images where we know, so we don't need to worry about most of that. We, we know where we want them. We have them where we want them already imported onto our computer. So we're going to go to add, which is going to add the photos to our Lightroom catalog without moving them at all. So we're just going to tell Lightroom, hey, these are where the photos are that we want imported. Just go ahead and add them to the catalog. And they're going to be in the same place that we put them um, going forward. So we can come over here and select where our photos are. So in this case, I put that on my desktop. So I've got to scroll through, find my desktop area here and select my Lightroom tutorial catalog folder and you'll see what it's doing there is um, it's uh, finding all of the subfolders as well uh, underneath where I've clicked so if I click on a master folder like this one it's gonna find all the folders on the inside of that folder now if I were actually doing this in a real situation I would go through and just find the um, last folder that I shot. So it would be right here and I could click here and see just that last uh, little um, mock memory card import that we did. That would be these photos. Since we've got three separate folders in here and we want to import all those, we can highlight and click all those. We can just click the photos master folder. But I'm going to click on all these and just uh, import those. And another thing you can do too is during import uh, go, is go ahead and come over here to keywords you can apply develop settings, so if you, uh, we'll get into that later, um, but if you have settings from your developing um, module within Lightroom, you can um, uh, apply those. You could apply metadata, which we'll get into on another tutorial as well, but what I want to mention here is really that you could um, add keywords. So if these were all uh, models, I could say maybe model, and we'll just leave it at that, but you could obviously get much more in depth with the keywords that you imply, so, or apply to them. So we'll go ahead and click import now. And you'll see those co photos come into our library now. It's a pretty quick process. And um, so now what? So now we have all of these photos here and we can come over and start organizing. So if we take a peek over here, we can see um, uh, the catalog and we can see either all the photographs, we can make a quick collection, we can see um, just the images that were in the previous import. If we go to folders, we can see uh, the folders and where our images are contained uh, within the folders that we've imported. So we can see those three folders that we imported here. Um, <clears throat> and for now, uh, the main thing I want to be concerned with is the collections um, panel here. And within that, we have these smart collections here, and some of them have already been created for us. Like we can see here images that have five star ratings. So what I'd like to get into now is kind of how to use these collections and smart collections. By the way, these are just published services. Uh, if you set them up, you can, for instance, publish a photo straight from Lightroom into Facebook or Flickr and things like that. So that's what that is, but we won't talk about that now. So uh, what we are gonna talk about is collections and smart collections. And to use um, those things really effectively, um, I prefer to uh, make sure that my images are kind of keyworded and rated so that they're easier to use smart collections with. So we'll start with no keywords over here. So I just deleted all the keywords from all those photos. That's what I was doing there. And what I want to do now is go ahead and come through, and I'm also going to uh, get rid of the ratings on all of them. So. This is what your photos might look like if you just import them. None of them are rated, none of them are keyworded yet, unless you keyworded them while you're importing. So now let's go through and just quickly try and keyword um, these photographs with something that we can use to kind of separate them out a little bit more. Uh, you can get as crazy or as simple with this as you want to. 
as few or as many keywords as you want with each image. So um, let's keep it simple for this video and just uh, maybe go by the model's hair color. So for instance, I may want to we'll type in the word red just for her hair. Oh, we got another someone with red hair here. So we'll type that in there as well. And this person has green hair. So we pick out the ones that probably don't have um, multiple people who have that color hair and just keyword them real quick. And now I can go through and let's say I want to get all of the people with um, brown hair. So she's got brown hair. She's got brown hair. She's got brown hair, sort of brown hair. So we'll click on all. I'm control clicking, by the way, control. And um, so for these people, we can just type in brown. Oops, brown. There we go. And then maybe blonde. And then she's got, I guess, black hair. All right, so we've kind of keyworded all these people, I think, now. So someone, everyone's got a hair color at least, even if it's not perfect. Good. Oh. All right. So the next thing I might do is if I had just imported all these photos would be to go through and kind of rate them. And especially if they were from one big shoot, like an event or something like that, and there's a bunch of photos I didn't really want um, to deal with, I can go through and start rating those photos. And it's really simple and quick to narrow them down by that. So I can click on this uh, view here to get a full screen view. Um, I, or click here to get the grid view. But uh, basically what I typically do is kind of just use the arrow keys to flip through the images really quick. And I'll kind of come through and rate all the ones with one star that I like and I want to keep. Um, maybe I don't want to keep that one. Now again, these are usually, these are pretty all pretty good photos, but uh, some of them I'm going to leave out just for the demonstration. And so now that I've rated all the ones that I like with one star, I can click on this filter over here uh, with the rating here and just click on the one star. And that will narrow down my selection to the photos that have one star. Uh, I can do the same process again and give the photos that I really like um, two stars and then click the two star filter. And then maybe give images I really really like more stars and go from there and then narrow it down even further perhaps okay so whoops and now that I rated that image there's only one image with five star okay so now we've rated our images and we've keyworded our images a little bit that empowers us to be able to use smart collections much more effectively in the way that I like to use them uh, which is to come into your collections panel, click on a new collection, create smart collection, and let's name the smart collection um, blonde hair two plus. So what we want to do is create a smart collection that has models with blonde hair and or yeah, with blonde hair and a star rating of two stars or higher. So we'll leave, we've got one criteria already here, which is rating, so we'll leave that. And we'll say uh, is greater than or equal to two stars there. Then we'll add another criteria by clicking on the little add symbol here. And we'll come down and scroll down to other metadata and then click keywords. And here we'll type in blonde and we're all done. So we'll click create and we've created a smart collection over here that says blonde hair two plus and we've got our two models with blondish hair uh, that are rated either two stars or higher. So perfect. So we, now we can also uh, if you want to go a simpler route just create a collection and we could say maybe uh, green hair and this is just a simple collection. So we have that collection now uh, to get back to where we can see all of our photographs, we can come up here and click all photographs. And 
I might just find that one model with green hair right here and drag and drop that photo into the green hair collection. So that's another way you can set up collections and just drag and drop. So if you want to remove a photo from a collection once you've added it, obviously with a smart collection, you want to base your criteria on uh, the, you know, you'd want to have the proper criteria to have the images that you want. But if you've got a just a normal collection like that, once you've um, added a, a, an image, you can just come in and right click and say, let's see where to go, remove from collection down here at the bottom, and it will remove that image. You can also right click on the collection itself and delete it uh, there as well. And same thing with here, if I want to delete this smart collection, I can just delete it. So often what I'll do is if I'm looking for particular types of images, let's say I'm just looking for pictures of trees, I can go through, um, create a smart collection that just says trees uh, and then maybe has other criteria, pick out the images I want, export them um, quickly, um, and then delete the smart collection because it doesn't need to be there for the future. So that's kind of a really neat way. You don't end up with all these collections all um, you know, bunched up over here. You can just keep things nice and clean and just create smart collections as you need them. So the trick is to make sure that you're keywording and rating your images as they come in and um, that'll keep things pretty simple for you. So there's a lot more stuff going on, a lot of other ways, a lot of other ways you could organize your images, a lot of other ways you could import your images, but this is the kind of, you know, the keep it simple method that I use that I think um, works really well and uh, keeps my workflow simple and on track. So I hope this helped. Um, if you guys want to take a look at more of my work, check out www.alexbunton.com. That's A-L-E-X-B-U-N-T-I-N.com. And um, you can also learn more about photography at thephotoguild.net. That's thephotoguild.net. Have a good one.